Hello, sweeties potatoes. With time seemingly passing by faster and faster, instead of letting life string us along for another year, here are 123 ideas for us to reset and live more proactively and intentionally. It wouldn't be a Rowena video if we didn't turn these ideas into actionable systems and next steps, but more on this at the end. Disconnect to reconnect. Take a hike? No, really. Go take a hike and go somewhere. Physically remove yourself from your day-to-day, -day, even if it's for a few hours. Use this time to think about the year you just had and the year you'd like to have. Now, write it all down somewhere. You can journal, you can draw, you can try all these different styles of resetting. And if starting from zero or blank pieces of paper scare you, try using a workbook like Eileen's from Lavendaire's or use templates like this one I created last year. Once you write everything down, start implementing this into your day-to-day. -day. Schedule what you want to do onto your calendar, try calendar blocking, look into productivity apps like Sensama, Notion, and Superhuman. Take the time to get familiar with these platforms so you don't get overwhelmed. There's also endless videos available online to help you get started. Try the two-minute rule. If you can respond to a friend, send an email, put something back in two minutes, do it. I've been tidying for five minutes before bed every night, all of 2022, and it's surprising how something so simple can make the world's difference in the long run. Go figure. It's like my mom saying, tiny changes lead to big results over time. Make it a point to really take care of yourself this year. Have a mini spa day at home. Try a scalp detox treatment. My favorite hair care discovery of 2022 is Acton Acre. Layer on an oil cleanser before using a clay mask to really unclog those stubborn blackheads. Light a candle, take a bath, block off a whole day to spend at home and do whatever non-work, school, career, future related thing you want to do. Eat a bag of Takis if you want with chopsticks, even if it gives you fire poops. Wake up early or sleep in, watch all the shows or opt for a fully tech-free day. If you get bored, let yourself be bored. When was the last time you allowed yourself to be fully bored without reaching for any screens or distractions? Cherish this time of doing nothing as it's where some of our best ideas come from. Spend some time in nature. Heal your mind, body, and soul as you watch the clouds pass and the 50 shades of leaves dance. If you love the ocean, go to the ocean. If you love the mountains, go to the mountains. And while you're there, touch sand or touch grass, like actually feel the sand slipping through your fingers and the many blades of grass tickling your toes. Create memories with yourself and with others without feeling the need to document in any way, shape, or form. Be present, cherish time with loved ones, including yourself, and allow yourself to enjoy the moment. One of my three words of 2023 is support, so I'm all about opening up and getting vulnerable with friends. With getting to know you cards, with New York Times 36 questions that lead to love, or ask your friends what their greatest dreams and deepest fears are. Send a chingu flowers for no reason. Write me the peng yo a letter. Reach out proactively whenever you see something or think of something that reminds you of them. Presence is the greatest present. Say yes to going out if you've been spending a lot of time alone. And when you're out with friends, be with them. Leave your phone completely out of sight. Instead of waiting for your turn to speak, listen, like really listen when your friends are talking. FaceTime a friend instead of texting or just texting your friends back and not be the worst texter in the world, I'm sorry. Plan a friendship date and do all the things in this video together. Put in as much effort as you would for a juicy, romantic date with your significant other because we can give our friends as much love and attention as we give our partners. Another one of my words for the new year is to be more creative. So try to recreate a drink or dish you try while at a cafe or eating out. I love playing around and being my own mocktail mixologist and hot dogs are my guilty pleasure. And this box from H Mart is surprisingly so easy to make with the hot dog press I found on Amazon, which leads us to make the things you've been meaning to make. Keep a note on your phone for all the ideas you have throughout the day that you usually forget. It can literally be anything. Once you have something you want to make, be it food, be it DIY, be it, I don't know, fashion, outfit choices, get inspiration for Pinterest or watch how-to videos on YouTube. 
Make a list of what you need and give yourself permission to buy these supplies because you deserve it, like Vivian's bubble machine. If you know, you know. Then make the blob frame or beaded necklaces and don't forget to take a moment to appreciate yourself for taking the time to make something. Remember to celebrate the small wins. Do that thing you've been meaning to do. If you've been curious about pottery, look up a studio near you. If you wanna start vlogging, you can start filming on your phone. Want to learn a new language? Find a teacher online or look up a language course. One thing I'm working on this year is getting better at Chinese, speaking, reading, and writing. For the longest time, I thought taking three years in high school and one semester in college was enough, but guys, learning really never stops and there's always room for growth. You can't truly enjoy wealth without health. When it comes to finessing fitness, find something that works for you. Not a fan of high intense interval training or anything that is strenuous? Try less intense workouts like bar or yoga. Or the 12-3-30 where you walk on a treadmill on 12 incline at three speed for 30 minutes. I just saw Lee doing this and I wanna start doing this too. Go on a walk with someone and use it as an excuse to have a quality conversation with them Legend has it, if you need to get your Asian dad to tell you anything they wouldn't normally tell you, ask them to go on a walk with you. If you can't be bothered going out, cast a workout on TV to break a sweat. If you can't be bothered working out, try stretching more regularly to get your body moving and your posture in tip top shape. Having a hunch you're forming technique? Work on your posture by walking videos online and I just sat up straighter as I'm recording this voiceover. Spend time looking into how to make your workplace more ergonomic. When all else fails, all else, when all else fails, drink more water. But really, make yourself a whole flower tea that's as beautiful as it is nourishing. Better yet, enjoy it with a friend. Basically just figuring out what you can do to get yourself to drink more water through adding fruits in your water or eating fruits that are high in water content. Before moving on from our best dehydration, here's a little commercial break brought to us by Lark. As someone who doesn't drink enough water and is constantly drying out like a raisin, my greatest discovery for drinking more water has been finding a water bottle that sparks joy. Bottles of the past were either too clunky, not the most sustainable, or smelly. What I've absolutely fallen in love with, and James too, he's already claiming this bottle, is this beautiful creation from Lark. This is the world's first self-cleaning water bottle that uses UVC light to remove up to 99% of bacteria from the water and bottle. Finding a bottle I enjoy using that never gets smelly naturally led to a higher chance of me carrying around, which means it's within reach at all times and that I actually reach for it without having to think about it. Now this is how we build habits. Lark also has a pitcher that uses the same UVC technology to purify water and a plant-based fill to remove any harmful pollutants from our tap. I've tried my fair share of water pitchers that all end up being disappointing in some way or another until I met this picture. The way that it is designed, the way that the water tastes and pours is absolutely chef's kiss. Look at that precision, there's zero spillage. If you're interested in checking out the Lark bottle or pitcher, there's a link in my description. Yes, this is sponsored, but I promise you will not be disappointed. I think we definitely all need a little more fun in our lives. Play all the games. I've been loving speed rounds of Catan with James as a brainy nightcap. There's also card games, big fan of big two over here. Shout out to my dad for teaching me since I was but a little peanut and letting me win to build my confidence. Now who loves a good challenge? Look at this ridiculous puzzle I got for White Elephant that I was actually very excited about because I'm competitive and a little chaotic. Take yourself on a date. Go see the sunrise or chase the sunset. Check out that cafe you've been seeing all over Instagram. Try a new boba spot. People watch and come up with their life stories. Do things you used to do as kids. Go on eBay to find games you grew up with. <laughs> this was such a joy, but it's very loud. I also love making noises while blowing on a blade of grass in public, even if it makes James mortally it. embarrassed. You actually gonna do it? I'm leaving. Experiment with skincare, makeup, or learn a new hairstyle. For our mental health, take the time to create an environment that inspires and grounds you. 
Declutter the things and let go of all that hasn't been serving you. Digitally, turn off all your notifications, protect your sacred space and peace. Only the most important people in your life should have this kind of access to you. Unsubscribe to marketing emails and texts, especially texts, they're very intrusive, unless it's a brand that you absolutely love. Unfollow people and accounts that do the opposite of inspiring you. Keep track of your screen time and opt to do any of these 123 things instead of doom scrolling. Clear out your desktop and organize your files. <laughs> I need to take my own advice. Be gentle with yourself, learn to say no, take time to figure out your personal boundaries and invest in yourself. Try therapy or coaching. I've been self-sufficient my whole life and really believed that I could work everything out myself, but I decided to work with an executive coach a few months ago and my goodness, I've learned so much about myself. Go figure. Or try expressive writing where you write for at least 20 minutes for four consecutive days about something that you have been or are currently working through without worrying about punctuation, grammar, or anything. Write only for yourself and just let your thoughts flow. I'll leave this video of how I wrote my life together on screen and down below. Connect internally to connect spiritually. Find a meditation practice that works for you, even if it's simply focusing on your breath for one minute upon waking up have an accountability buddy to build habits with. James and I are doing a 30 days of meditation in January for anyone who would like to join. Embrace the fact that we don't actually need to fill up every single moment of every day with news, podcasts, books, shows, and music, and that there's magic in simply existing with yourself in silence and living your days without constant external input. Be open to miracles and miracles will find you. Read books to broaden your mind Talk to friends about your existential or spiritual ponderings, which may lead you to finding your spiritual community. Look into Eastern and Western religions and philosophy to see which speaks to you the most. Follow your curiosity about anything and everything and let it guide you. Hello friends! As we said in the beginning of the video, this wouldn't be a Rowena video if we didn't end on how we can turn these ideas into systems to implement into our daily lives. And if you guys are wondering, I'm actually in Las Vegas right now for CES with James and my suitcase was soaked. It was raining so hard in LA, so all of my clothes are wet and I'm drying it and it looks like a market in here. Anyway, as most of you know, I spent the past two years pouring my heart and soul into creating these New York reset templates on Notion. This year, I decided to do something a little different, went through this whole worksheet with James. I think this is such a beautiful way to build accountability and also to do something as a couple or just to do something with a really good friend, whatever your situation is. And I just wanna walk you guys through the worksheets for those who may not be as familiar the very first page is all about reflecting. I think it's important to reflect before we move forward and to remember the things that you're thankful for, the things that were challenging and the things that you overcame, the lessons that you learned, so that you can take all of that and try to see which things you want to keep, which things you want to let go of to create your three words for the new year. What all of these three words mean, if you guys are curious, we talked about it in the most recent episode of Voice Hugs podcast, episode 34. It should be coming out in a few days if you guys don't already know that voice hugs is our podcast another thing i want to call out is if you see the template next to my actual worksheet that i filled out with james we actually deleted sections and cleaned up the whole worksheet to only have what we need there's a few sections that we felt our answers would be repetitive so we also took that out and the moral of this whole story is that these worksheets are for you you can do whatever you want with it add to it as you will subtract it as you will you have permission to do anything you want with them because it is yours and it is to help you. The magic of it all and what I just am so proud of is this very last sheet where it just automatically populates all of your answers from the previous worksheets into one place for you to be able to very easily access throughout the year. So when James and I are reflecting every month and every quarter, this is the page that we're both going to be looking at together. What was it like working on this worksheet together? 
Any thoughts? Very good experience. My butt cheek is being split in half because I'm sitting on this very thin edge. I thought it was great. I don't normally spend a lot of time at the end of the year doing that type of reflection. So I think having the structure of the worksheet and then also doing it together, writing for each other, helped a lot with tying a nice bow at the end of the year. Ding! Do you want to say bye to the potato fam? A hug hug and a, that's it. Voice hugs. No, this isn't voice hugs. <laughs> it's a hug hug. Why did you just get so nervous? Okay, hug hug. Hug. Bye! Whee!